Ever since I got Blender, I've always wanted to know how I can create galaxies and black holes within Blender. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can do that by yourself. In our default scene, we're going to select the cube and hit X to delete it. Then we're going to do Shift A, Mesh, and just add in a plane. We're going to scale the plane up by something like 5. Now we're going to go ahead and set up all of our defaults. So we're going to go to our render properties, switch on bloom, switch on screen space reflections. Make sure you expand this and switch on refraction as well. And then we can go to the output settings, change our frame rate to 30 frames per second, make our end frame 300, and also change the output folder to whichever folder you want. You can change the file format to FFmpeg video and the encoding to MPEG4 with the output quality as perceptibly lossless. Now we can switch over to the viewport shading of render, click and drag to create a new window and change the type to the shader editor. Then hit N to remove the side panel. We can also just delete our light because we're not going to require that for now. With our plane selected, go to the material properties, add in a new material, scroll all the way down to the Settings and make sure that you switch on screen space refraction and change the blend mode to alpha clip. The reason we're using alpha clip and not alpha blend is so that we actually get the refraction later on. Now you can go ahead and make the spirals around or the accretion disk for the black hole so that we can actually see the black hole. So let's search for a noise texture and just plug that color into the base color. And now we want this to actually spiral around. So in order to do that, we can press control T with the node wrangler switched on or just add in the texture and texture coordinate and mapping node to the noise texture. Make sure you change from generated to object. And then by changing the rotation, we'll be able to get the spiral. So we want the spiral to be in a gradient from the center. The further away from the center it is, the more the rotation should be. So let's see how we can do that. Since we want it to be in the form of a gradient, we're going to search for a gradient node and just place that over here. And remember, the gradient node will also require its own mapping and texture coordinates. So let's just search for a mapping node and plug the vector into the vector and take the object from here and plug it into the vector of the mapping. Right now, the gradient is set to linear, but since we want it to be in all directions, we can change it from linear to spherical. And now if we were to directly plug the color into the rotation, we'd see that it is starting to spiral around. However, it's rotating on all three axes, X, Y, and Z. We can see that when we add in a multiply node or a math node and change it to multiply, we should get control over the number of circles that we get, essentially increasing the gradient effect. However, when we actually increase the value, you'll realize that it's not rotating in the same way. And that's because it's changing on both the X and Y as well. And we don't want that. So in order to make sure that it's changing only on one of the axes, we're going to search for a combine X, Y, Z node and just plug the value into the Z and place this vector into the rotation. So now as we increase the value, you can see how it rotates about the center. And this looks perfectly like what we require. Now, in order to get this to continuously spin as our accretion disk, should, we can just search for an add node or a math node set to addition and just plug that in right over here. And now as we add the value, you'll see everything rotating. So if you want this to be perfectly looping, you can go ahead and just add in keyframes of at frame zero and at frame 300, you can add in a value of two pi, which would be one entire rotation because this is going to be rotating it in radians. However, we're not going to be looking at the looping aspect this time. So we're just going to add in a driver by typing hash frame by 100. So now when you actually play it, you should be able to see it rotate. You can change the speed as per your liking. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually deal with the colors of our accretion disk. So for that, we can just pass the noise texture through a color ramp before placing it into the base color. So we can go ahead and just play around with the color ramp. And then we can go ahead and place this color into the emission instead of the base color, just so that all of the colors technically become brighter. We can increase the emission strength to something like five so that we get a really nice bloom as well. Now, clearly we don't want the edges to be like this. So the same gradient texture that we passed, we can use that as a mask to remove the edges of this plane. So in order to do that, we're going to search for a mix RGB node and just plug that in after the color ramp and take the color of the gradient texture and plug that into the second value over here. Make sure that you change the factor all the way to one and change it from mix to multiply. Then plug the color into color one from the color ramp 
and start this color into the emission. Now we want the regions that are not currently radiating out any color to be transparent. In order to do that, we'll, we'll pass this color into the alpha socket of the principal PSDF as well. But now you see everything is completely see-through. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change the clip threshold till we actually see enough of what we want. So something like a clip threshold of 0.01 seems to be perfectly all right. And we can also go ahead and increase the emission strength to 15. Now that we have our creation disk we can go ahead and just change our world color all the way to black switch off overlays and there we have our accretion disk if we play the animation you can actually see it rotate as well now to actually create the black hole so we're gonna hit shift a and add in a uv sphere we can hit ctrl 2 to add a subdivision surface of level 2 and also change the object to shade smooth now we can go ahead and give it its material so let's go to the material properties and just add in a new material we're gonna get rid of the principal psdf and we're gonna search for a refractor BSDF and we can just plug that into the surface. So once we add in the refraction BSDF, we currently don't see any changes because we have to switch on the screen space refractions for this material. And also in our previous material, which is the accretion disk, we have to make sure that we switch off screen space refractions. Blender EV just works in a way that if both of them are set to have screen space refractions, they ignore each other. They ignore all other refractive materials. That's also why we can't keep the blend mode as alpha blend because if we do keep that alpha blend as you can see the refraction can no longer figure out what is there so only when it's on alpha clip can we actually get it we could get it at alpha using alpha hashed as well but i personally feel like the number of samples required to get a nice smooth render using alpha hashed is too large and that's why alpha clip works the best for me so now you can clearly see that there is some sort of refraction happening but it just looks like a glass ball right in the center that is not exactly what we want so let's make sure we have that selected and we have to change the io are according to how far away it is from the center. So to do that, we're going to search for our layer weight node and just connect the facing to the IOR. Make sure that when you do this, you keep saving the file from time to time. So right now, we see that it stops working again and we just have to play around with the blend till we get the type of refraction coming in. So we can see that something around 0.95 gives us some sort of refraction. However, it's actually refracting towards the center, but in an actual black hole, you'd notice that it refracts all the way around. And also the amount or the size at which it's refracting is really small. So what we can do is we can just scale up the sphere as well quite a bit, keep this at 9.5 and just search for a math node, set it to power, and keep the exponent value as minus one. So this would find the reciprocal of the value. And when you plug that in, it's going to actually bend upward. So this looks quite good as it is, but a black hole has to have a black hole in the center, a region of absolute darkness, which is missing from this particular scene. So in order to add that in, we can go ahead and just use the same layer weight node and have like a black region in the center. So to do that, we can add in another shader, but to get black, an empty socket for a shader is also seen as black. So we can just keep it as that. So we can just search for a mixed shader, plug this in over here, and the factor we can control using this layer weight node itself. So let's plug this facing directly into the factor. Now you see the outer regions are black and the inner regions are working. So in order to change that, we can just switch the shader, place it into the bottom socket. And now you can see a black hole at the center, but we want more control over it. So let's search for a color ramp node and plug the node right in over here. And now if we just increase the black, you should be able to see the black hole form. In. So this is what I think the perfect black hole using Blender looks like. You can go ahead and just place the camera as well. So let's tap zero on the numpad to get our camera, switch on overlays, select our camera and just hit N, view, camera to view, N, and then just move around till we get our camera to be placed somewhere nicely. I also like it when the black hole is rotated. Instead of rotating the black hole, what we can do is we can rotate the camera. So let's go to the object properties and just rotate it on the Y, something like that. Just make sure that we see both the top and the bottom and have the entire accretion disk fit into our scene. Switch off overlays and this is what we currently have. You can always add in stars to the background if you want to by going to the world settings, switching from object to world in the shader editor as well. Search for a noise texture or a Voronoi texture. So we'll use the Voronoi texture distance for this. Search for a color ramp and just pull the black in, take the distance, plug it into the factor and the color into the color. Now we can go ahead and just increase the scale to something really high, maybe 100, and also flip the color ramp. And there you should have the stars. Make sure that 
in our camera properties, we change the viewport display passport out all the way to once so that we see only what's in the camera. We can switch off camera to view and just zoom in and play around with this till we get something that we like. You can play around with the color of the stars as well. Instead of keeping this as white, we can go ahead and just get a few variations of colors as well. This reddish yellowish or orangish stars works out fairly well. And there you go. That is how you can actually create any type of black hole in Blender. You can play around with the colors and just get different galaxies, accretion disks, and you can actually animate the camera around as well and have a lot of fun with this. I really hope you learned something and I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I did creating it for you. Be sure to comment any questions you might have down below and I will definitely respond to them. I'm going to keep posting a lot more of such content, so stay tuned and until then, stay creative.